Hey y'all, welcome to Broken Dolly TV. And if you're new to this channel, I hope you will consider subscribing today. And go ahead and follow us on Instagram at Broken Dolly TV. We can chat over there about everything doll related. My name is Gypsy, and today we're going to be doing a quick review, well, quick for me, uh, of one of these BMR 1959 dolls. So today we're going to be deboxing this guy over here. And I just wanted to show you the other dolls that I happen to have in this collection at this time. Um, this one is the girl with the braids, the Blasian looking doll. And she is a gift for Adonis from one of our subscribers. So shout out Kelsey for that. And we'll be showing you guys this doll's details in another video. And then this one I already did a review of. You want to go ahead and check that one out as well. And this is the one with the green hair. He's wearing a custom shirt that my son made for me. He took a Barbie regular Barbie Ken top and then he put this astronaut unicorn graphic on there for me which is one of Gino's original designs so you guys can go ahead and check out Gino have fun with Gino on on Instagram if you want to see what other stuff he's been working on he's an artist but initially I just want to show you how he came so this one I got from Amazon um, Adonis actually got this for me for my birthday he surprised me with it and I haven't taken them out of the box yet, and it's been a few months. Uh, the box comes with this beautiful artwork done by the designer, Carlisle Nuera, who's one of my favorite Barbie doll fashion designers and doll designer. All of the boxes are like this cardboard, you know, plain cardboard. Uh, looks like a shoe box almost, and then he's got the picture of the dolls on the boxes. So that's pretty cool. And then see at the bottom of the box, you're gonna see Carlos' signature there that he has on all of his artwork. So it's the real stills, okay? Zombie hating, zombie hating. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened to this box though. It's a little discolored because I think maybe either something spilled on it or I don't know what happened, but I don't know. I'm not making a big fuss over it though. I ain't worried about that box. So, here's the dolly. We're gonna take him out of here, but this is how he comes packaged, firstly of all. He's got tissue paper here in the back, and there's a little package there in the corner. So don't leave that in your box, you guys. Don't forget that piece. I think this is where his uh, sunglasses are. And then on this side, there's nothing, just the doll stand. Okay, so that's how he comes. And then, let's remove this doll. So as you'll see while I'm taking him out, there are no plastic tabs that attach the doll to the box. And that's a huge plus because we don't like those. They snag on the doll's clothing and, and the head. And it's really annoying when you see those holes in the doll's clothes and stuff. I feel like for kids, it probably doesn't matter. Like the Fashionistas dolls and the Playline dolls all come with those tabs and you just rip them out of the boxes. But for something more high-end or collector level, I feel like those are really tacky. So let's not do those, you feel me? But anyway, so this guy does not have that issue. The whole insert comes out if you want to remove that from the shoe box. And then the empty box will be like this with the paper in the bottom, see? And then you can use this box to craft something cool. Um, if you're into recycling the cardboard. Here we go. He is out of the box. I'm not going to bore you with the whole box opening and taking him out and all that stuff. But this is what he looks like out of the box. He did come with these glasses that were um, packaged in the side of the box. And they're clear. The whole glass, the whole entire pair of glasses are just clear plastic. And they look almost like goggles or like a aviator glasses sort of. Those are pretty sick. I like them. These are really cool looking. And I like how they look on his face. Like, they look like real glasses. What? Those are exclusive. I like these. I hope I don't lose those. Yeah, so I really do love those glasses. And I'm hoping that they can fit on the girls' faces too. Because I'll probably um, use them on a girl doll too. If they fit. Sometimes the boys' heads are a little bigger. So this is the outfit he's wearing. And then he's on his doll stand that he came with. The doll stand is just, it says BMR 1959 on the base. And it's not really fancy or anything. It's just, you know, plain black. And then it's got the see-through um, back piece there that the doll's leaning up against. And the back part of the, of the stand has this little piece that you connect to hold them in place. 
and that's the whole construction. It's a three-piece uh, stand, so nothing fancy, something we've already seen a bunch of times before. I'm not much of a doll stand person, but I know some of you guys live by these doll stands. So now let's get into the details. I feel like there's so much to see, but not that much to see at the same time. It's like very simple doll, but I don't know. You guys tell me. So his face, firstly of all, look at the sculpt. His face is beautiful. I love his sculpt. He's super pale. I do have a, um, a light on, but only so that you guys can see clearly the details. The coloring is pretty accurate with or without the light on. Um, he's really, really pale like this, for real. And he's got a light uh, color for the eyes. They look like almost like light green or hazel or something. And very minimal, like face up. It's a very simple face. A lot of room for customization. You could give him a mustache, a beard, a goatee. His hair is real hair that is rooted into the doll's head. Wow. It's an actual man bun. <laughs> so that's how the hair looks. And it looks like it would be pretty long when it's taken down. Hopefully he doesn't have a big bald spot in the middle of his uh, ponytail where his scalp is. That's what I really, really hope. He's wearing this large sweat shirt with a hood attached. I wonder if his hood can go over his head. Yeah, so his hood is actually big enough to go over his face, over his head. That's what's up. Coo, coo. There we go. And he has no worries of getting shot walking through the burbs because his skin color is too pale for anyone to mistake him for one of us. All right, so you're safe in your hood, buddy. You got nothing to worry about. All right, so he's got on these like basketball shorts type things. And of course, it's got the, the BMR 1959 logo all over it. It's printed all over the pants. And I like that the sweatshirt actually has pockets that he can put his hands in. Oh, look at that. Let me detach this thing. Yeah, see, I can stick my finger in there and they touch on either side. So it's like a real sweatshirt. That is pretty awesome. And then, what's going on with your hands, bruh? These sleeves are like really long. They totally go past his hands. They're very, very long. So you are going to have to move the sleeves up over his hands manually because they're gonna just, the sleeves just wanna cover up the hands because they're very long. But hey, that's a look. And um, the sweatshirt, it's, it feels like a real sweatshirt, the material that it's made of. There's no opening, so I'm guessing this is one of those pull over his head or pull it down over his body kind of deal uh, to get it on and off. But good thing that he's got a lot of articulation to make it easy to do that. And as you can see, he is wearing a fanny pack. Guys, that's what they're called, okay? I know you guys like to call them some brand new age, millennial, whatever name you want to give these things, but they're fanny packs, all right? Um... <laughs> So he's got one of these. I love all the zippers in gold. I love the plain black design. And then it's got their logo here on the top. And it's adjustable. So once you unhook this, you can switch it from off of his shoulder to around his waist. That's why we called it a fanny pack. Um, I'm sure that it will fit around his waist. I'll try it out in a little bit. And then for the pants, they're just a pair of stretchy pants like this. See? Wowzers, he's got elastic around the waist and it just sits real nicely on his hips. And they're a good length. I like that they come past his knees, so that's pretty cool. And I definitely see me putting those on some of the other guy dolls that I have. And then his slippers, this kind of caught me by surprise because I didn't expect for this outfit to pair with slippers. Um, you know, he's got on a hoodie. And you'd normally think cool kind of weather wearing a hoodie. So like, what's up with the slippers and the shorts? We used to make fun of my dad because he would dress like this. <laughs> my dad would always have on like a sweatshirt with some shorts. And we'd be like, where are you going? Like, what weather is this supposed to be? Um, <laughs> make up your mind. You want long sleeves and shorts? What's going on? But yeah, so this kind of reminded me of that. But I think it's cute. And I like the slippers because they stay on his feet without having to have like all these contraptions in place to keep them on um oh wait a minute you know what oh shoot there isn't anything securing his foot to the slippers but i can see here that there's like a dip in the shoe can you see that 
it's it's like a slight dip here oh that's sick so the foot is sitting inside of this little dip and the rubbery texture is creating friction so that's how it stays put genius who who whose idea was this carlisle did you do this it was a good idea that's really smart wow you know that's the worst when you get these slippers for the dolls and they look so cool and realistic and then you put them on and they don't stay put they're just always sliding off the doll's foot that's really annoying um so this is a really cool design for the shoe i'm so surprised i did not expect that level of detail i'm really surprised okay okay i'm okay, going okay. but uh yeah i just wanted to see if he had a manicure like my green haired guy back there who came with pink nail polish or something on his nails but this guy doesn't have that he doesn't have any makeup on his face either and the ken doll with the green hair did come with makeup on um it's easily removable if you decide you want to do that but if you don't care then whatevs so that's pretty neat that they they're not styled exactly the same way and then I want to take these clothes off so we can see what the rest of them looks like. So the VMR dolls are pretty special because they do have um, made to move articulation for the boys as well as the girls. All of the dolls come with made to move articulation and but they are different body types so that's really significant I think. And I just want to see what how you do this. How you do this? How you do this? How you do this? Okay this is crazy. Yeah, I think it goes over his head. Sometimes they go over, sometimes they slide down. Don't know until you try. Depends on the stretch factor and how the clothing is cut. So we're gonna do it like this. Okay, come on. Come on, come on over. Come on over, baby. Uh oh, what did I rip? Uh, uh I broke it, y'all. I broke it. No, I didn't. All right, yeah, be careful. Don't be rough like me, please. Don't be rough like me. I'm just in a rush because this doll been in his cage for the longest. I be getting anxiety when I see my dolls in their boxes for too long. Oh no, they gotta come out. All right, yeah, it's harder though because this house is so small compared to our North Carolina house. So I don't have a lot of space for dolls. I have, a lot of them are packed up still and we've been here about a year. Oh, help me. All right. Who lives in Washington? Can I move to your house, please? Please, can I move to your house? Um, okay. <laughs> Anyways, so here's how he looks without his clothes on. As you can see, he's very muscular, but he's actually got the regular body type for Ken for the most part. Um, he's real. He's got a chest plate here, which I've not really found to be that useful. I'm not sure why they do this with. Uh, the made to move Ken bodies. I don't think they need a chest plate like Pharrell Pharrell, but whatevs um, They have them. So he's got a chest plate. He's got The articulation here in the upper arm that will allow you to pivot the arm like this like rotate it And then he's got joints here That you kind of have to force initially until the joints loosen up a little bit, but it gives you that range of motion and then the hands, of course, the wrist articulation, and you can touch your face. Hi, hi, hi. He can shave his own beard. He can shave his own beard. And what is that on his head? I don't know. Something shiny and sticky looking up there. And then he does have, um, like, flocking on his hair on the sides around the shaved looking parts. So be careful not to wet that, you guys, because if you wet it, it will come off. And I cannot guarantee you're going to be able to salvage it afterwards. So be careful when you're styling the doll's hair. And, um, rest of his articulation, he's got a joint in his hips that allow for the thighs to move freely, like this. Put his leg all the way up. Well, not all the way up, but up enough. All right, so his. His leg joint, something like that. And then he's got another joint in his knee that is a little bit deeper than the usual articulated Ken bodies. Look at how far. He can straight up be a yoga instructor. What's good? What is good? Get this flexibility. And then he's got the classic 
joint there in his ankle so his feet can move. If he wants to be a ballerina, he can. He can be anything. Wowzers. Yeah, so that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And here's how he looks from the back. A very nice figure. I really like it. And his skin tone is similar to the female made to move doll in the peach top for the curvy body and the purple top for the regular body. His skin tone is like the same as theirs. It's that pale skin tone. So if you have other male dolls that you want to put onto this body, then this is the body donor for you. And it's beautiful. I really like his um very calm, serene expression too. He just looks very relaxed. He looks very cool headed. And I like that. I do. Extra, extra, read all about it. All right. So here's the deal with his hair. It was tied into a tight ponytail like this first. Then that ponytail was twisted into the bun. So he had two hair ties. And I took them both down. Of course, they're all twisty and curly because of his bun that the hair was in. But the hair itself is actually just a really straight texture. And it's like a, uh, it's like a chestnutty kind of color. Yeah, he's definitely a brunette. And the inside, I'm focusing on this scalp action here just to see if he's got a bunch of bald spots in his head. But on some, to be honest, like I don't see a significant bald spot to be worried about. So I think I think we're okay. Because I hate when I go through the doll's head and there's just giant patches of scalp. But it's not really thickly rooted. All the the parts are like, you know, they're kind of spaced apart as you can see. But it all blends all together and it doesn't look scarce when the hair is like flat on his head. As far as getting it flat to his the head though, I don't even know how that would work because of the flocking. You can't wet the doll's hair and then let it touch the flocking or it's gonna mess it up. Um, the good thing is that he does not have any gel in his hair, it's not stiff. And so there are other ways that you can kind of finesse the hair so that it can be a little more flat. But you gotta play around with it to get it right, you know? But I mean, you can style this hair and tie it up in different kinds of ponytails and stuff, so that's pretty cool. And um, just kind of retrain the hair to do what you want it to do while being very careful about that flocking. I'm sure there's a way you can cover up the flocking before you wet the rest of his hair to style, but just, you guys, be careful. Please just don't do any old thing without doing some research if you don't want to ruin the doll um, from the features he already came with. But, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with this choice in the doll, and I do want all of the BMR boy dolls because I like that they have articulation, and even if I'm not a fan of the face sculpts, I know I can reuse the bodies for donors um, for other dolls that I do have in my collection that need bodies, so I ain't gonna worry about that. But so far, the ones that I've seen, I do like the head sculpts of all of them, and I just want to see more skin tones, you feel me? Yeah, look at him, look great, great. Okay, so let me fix him back up for y'all. <laughs> okay, he's back to looking decent again. I put his hair back up in a ponytail. Um, when I examined the hair a little bit closer off camera, I did notice that the, the, the scalp, it's not closely rooted. Like, there's empty spaces in between each hole of hair, but it's even. So that's why it doesn't look like he just has a big gaping bald spot in the middle of his head. Like we do see in some of the dolls that have high ponytails. Um, they do that with the girls a lot. So that's why I wanted to check. So it's not that bad, but it's not totally, totally like rooted all the way through either. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about restyling his hair. And the clothes, I tried his hoodie on my other doll just to see how it would look. I like those colors on him. They look kind of cool. Yeah, but instead I changed him into a short sleeve shirt that seemed to match his pants a little bit better. And his shirt that he's wearing, this is one of Gino's designs. So you can definitely go and check out Gino's uh, artwork over on his page. He made me some custom stuff. And the fanny pack, I'm disappointed about this, you guys. So it had multiple holes where you could adjust the hole and I thought okay well then the shortest adjustment is going to fit around the waist uh no it's so loose it will just 
it will fall right off of his waist if you try to put it on his waist. So I had to do this intricate, you know, knot thing with the back of it to make it a little bit shorter so that the straps would go around his waist. Bleh. So I don't know about all that. I don't like that. But anyways, but it does look cool around his waist too. Very retro. Yeah, so that's another thing to keep in mind when you are thinking about how you're going to accessorize with these dolls once you get them. But all in all, I do like the concept and I do like the looks. And even though the colors are really flamboyant and loud, um, I like the individual pieces that the dolls come with because they're fun to mix and match with other things. You feel me? Like he had on an orange, um, he had on an orange sweatshirt with some blue pants. Like to me, that doesn't go together, but. <laughs> But hey, if that's your style, that's your style, you feel me? I mean, there's a lot of room for individuality with these dolls. That's really what I like about them. So they definitely promote like individuality. But then when you see them all together, you get that sense of unity too. Like they belong in a group together. You know, they all go together. Like it's, it's the best of both worlds. I don't know how they were able to manage that look, but it works. And I'm with it. That's what it is. So stay tuned for um, my unboxing of this blazian braided girl that's just what i'm calling her <laughs> i don't know guys we have nicknames for these guys i know he's like the man bun he's the the green haired dude and there's all these other ones now there's wave two has already come out so um check out my um my doll events video about the bmr 1959 line in general and let me know what you guys think about the entire line as a group over on that video in the comments. Um, if it's not up already, it's coming soon. So just keep an eye out for that. And I will see you guys in our next video. But until then, my name's Gypsy. Follow me on Instagram. And I will see you next time on our next video right here on Broken Dolly TV. We ain't going nowhere, y'all. And have a dolly game.